You're welcome back. This is News File, it's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. It's brought to you by the kindest sponsorship of Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner, MTN, everywhere you go. Ashasi University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa. Duraplus, where Duraplus goes, water flows. Star Assurance, your solid partner. Rehoboth Properties. Having mosquito spray and coil, pleasant on humans, tough nightmare on insects, and Napa foods. It's tasty. Now let's get to security matters on the elections. And thanks to Dr. Uh, Srebo Kweku again. And I'm just learning that uh, he's actually in the, in the birthday mood because yesterday was his birthday. Uh, thank you for that alert, uh, David Akwete at Love FM. Thank you so much, Dr. Srubo Kweku, wishing you the very best on your birthday. Now, on the questions of uh, security, let me begin with um, let me begin with uh, Dr. 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 Okay, let 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 me begin with uh, Kweku. So, from what we have seen so far, there have been suggestions that the the exhibition the the registration exhibition problems more particularly the registration problems was sort of a dress rehearsal it should give us a picture of what we anticipate uh, the hotspots in excess of how many four thousand or so yeah. that's too much and then um the issues that some particularly the opposition party has had and the police and the other security have had to go out and you have heard how they have been talking uh, if we can hear the police briefly uh, they, they've they've said a number of things and giving some caution if you can hear them briefly and then we'll hear from Kweku. Yes, Kuku. Well, I am optimistic, if you like, cautiously optimistic in terms of uh, the election, the conduct of the election, and uh, the behavior of the electorate. I will not sit here and say there might not be challenges here and there. It will be unrealistic. But I think overall, we will do the same thing we have done over the years. Mm. We'll go out, to the, out there, vote, and have a peaceful election. It's interesting, if you go back, and I'm sure you say, is this my Quran? The <laughs> CDD survey. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a portion where it says, Ghanaians prioritize peaceful elections over free and fair elections. Right. That's quite an interesting mix, but at least 53% said they will prefer the elections are entirely peaceful, even if not completely fair, free and fair. I think both elements will come to bear on the election. Mm. But what I found most interesting is this one. A solid majority demands jail terms mm -hmm. for party supporters who engage in electoral fraud and violence. See, this thing is key. 
over the years, we have sown the seeds of impunity by not dealing effectively with these matters. Even in the course of the registration exercise, there were some pockets of violence here and there. We still do not know exactly what the status of those cases are. We make noise about them for a while, and then we forget. Here we are, situation. We need to punish those who perpetrate violence or electoral irregularities in the course of the elections. Mm. The greater enormous we deal with in that sense, the more deterrence we create. So yes, I'm aware the police and the security services have combined their efforts. They've undertaken some training, both psychological and physical. They are, themselves are going through the electoral laws and all those things, you know. But please, if there's an act of violence or irregularity, the perpetrators can and must be arrested and prosecuted in the courts. Mm. That is the way forward. Any other approach will just be toying around with the issue. You know? So I'm not about to talk about uh, the logistical readiness, operational readiness, because I think they know better. Right. And the signs we see show that they are doing something about it. I think they went on even uh, route matches. It's a way of building confidence in the right. population mm. and all that. I would pray that the political stakeholders, including other traditional authorities and the rest, should not perceive the deployment, because they will have to be deployed. I'm not sure if the military uh, personnel will be deployed within the registration centers. I haven't double-checked that. But whatever it is, they will be deployed, mm. perhaps close to the centers, so as to have a rapid response uh, capability. Mm. So, so among others, they make us understand that this is how things will look like for deployments. Um, they have in excess of 62,000 men to be deployed, police, fire service, prisons, Ghana Immigration Service, Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, and then they have the armed forces as well. The security personnel will wear distinctive armbands for easy identification. The BNI CID will operate without uniforms. You mean uh, the NIB? Y yes, the NIB. It stopped uh, being BNI. Okay. So then um, they will approach all polling stations as if they were hotspots. Mm -hmm. Motorbikes are not allowed within 100 meters of the polling stations. Rapid response units will be deployed on standby. They'll be on standby and deployed accordingly. At least one armed officer at each of the uh, 330 polling stations. Okay. So specific to your uh, mm. issue, yeah. there'll be at least one armed officer. Okay. So that's, that's how to go about it. That's right. uh, what to do if you witness electoral violence, um, electoral violence, police to provide a communication channel, and then you could use that. There's also response to distress call uh, to, ex to, expected, uh, to be expected within at least 15 minutes. So if you have any distress call within 15 minutes, you can expect a response uh, to deal with it. Mm, interesting. Mm. Yeah, I think it's comprehensive. Right. Enough, but of course, some, most times it's the action, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. D day operationalizing these things. But so far, so good. Okay. What I hear. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Dr. Champon, what do you also say about this? about the security of the elections itself? Yeah, I mean, I, I have every assurance that uh, the EC and the elections itself will be largely um, incident free. Mm -hmm. I think going are the days where we see people <laughs> snatching ballots and beating people up, uh, etc. I have read some of the statements from the security agencies that have been released in terms of like their plans uh, to uh, maintain the peace and security of the elections, and you just um, read a couple of them. That's all well uh, and good, um, and it shows you the preparedness on, on their side to deal with the 
um, election related is uh, security issues that may uh, arise. But from where I sit, I, I don't have any cause really uh, to, to think that um, any security issues that may arise cannot be adequately um, addressed. So, I mean, they, they, they talk about 4,000 or so flashpoints or hotspots. We know this. We know uh, the places. So, for example, in Accra, we, we saw the incident at uh, Ododo Dio Dio and, and a few other places. And I think the, the right action and communicating that action also then becomes important. So we should see swift arrest. We should see swift prosecution. We should see some action, again, being done beyond just what has been stated on paper. And that would go uh, a long way to ensure the, the credibility and the peaceful nature of, of, the, of, the, of the process. But, you know, it's quite clear and quite obvious to me, um, looking at the Ayawasu West war gone um, uh, by election and related issues that we still kind of have some way to go on that front. But there's been progress. And I don't think that uh, the minor scuffles that may arise cannot or uh, would not be adequately addressed. Right. Um, so we, we were to have the police join us and to you know, deal with certain specific concerns that um, you may have. You know, in the same manner that we got you to ask the EC your own questions, uh, we had planned to be able to do the same with the police. Unfortunately, um, they, as you can see, they are not available. Uh, we don't have Dr. Enin to now. Uh, uh, we, we, we take a break and when we return, um, Okay, so Dr. Enning joins us right after this, and then we will look at Martin Amidou's very latest epistle.